Well guys, I managed to squeeze in a 1500 bucks budget the new Ryzen 5 9600X and an RTX 4070 Super from ASUS. And today I'm gonna tell you how you can do it too. So let's get started. Welcome back at I'm watching PSUs. And now the new Ryzen CPUs came out and the reviewers were not so kind against them. But I actually think Ryzen 5 especially, 9600X, can be a good buy if you go ahead and know how to pair it with an appropriate GPU and how to tweak it to get the most performance out of it. It actually is quite a bit faster than 7000 series Ryzen. So I wanted to do a budget build around it and the best GPU to pair it with is an RTX 4070 Super. Now the model I picked here is an Asus Dual but it's not important which model you get. Any single model is gonna be fine but what is important is which other components you put around the build to make it cheap enough because there is no point to make a Ryzen 5 build if you end up spending 2000 or even 2500 bucks because you pay a lot for your case cooler and all the other stuff in your system. So here's what I've done today. Every single component, except for the CPU, GPU, motherboard and RAM, is from iTech. Now they even make SSDs. iTech started as a brand making not the best quality products. You know, I want to say it for honesty. And uh, especially their power supplies were pretty bad. And today I think the PSUs are where they excel the most. Let's go in order, okay? So I picked a Micro ATX MSI motherboard B650, their newly refreshed gaming series. Now, you can buy a motherboard like this for around 130 bucks, pretty cheap. And it's gonna be compatible out of the box with the Ryzen 9000 series. If you buy one with an older BIOS or an older mother, they are required to have a flashback button on the back. So even in that case, you can just flash the BIOS with no CPU installed and get your motherboard running. I picked some DDR5 6000 MHz Kingston RAM and now the RAM is very important when using a Ryzen CPU. Now I made a dedicated video on how to tweak your RAM appropriately for AM5, but basically you want 6000 MHz RAM with the lowest possible latency. And that's what I've got here today. I've got a 6000 MHz kit from Kingston, their Fury Beast white model, no RGB, but they are really cheap. You can buy them for as cheap as under 100 bucks if you buy them at the right time. And they're gonna give you maximum performance on your Ryzen 5. I then went with a Nitec SSD. And uh, this is their new lineup. First time I try one. They definitely put the size dimension in a pretty big font, but at least we know it's a one terabyte drive and you can buy it for around 100 bucks. Not too bad, not too cheap, but it's because it's actually derivating pretty good performance. I'm gonna make a little spoiler to you guys and show you the crystal disk mark of the SSD. And as you can see, it's actually delivering performance as I was expecting. Now for the cooler, again, you know it's gonna be high tech. We went with their new Sketek liquid cooler. Now they sold a lot of their previous liquid coolers, at least in Italy where I'm from. Basically the circular one, it was full of them. I saw them in every single shop, every single budget build around because they were really cheap. But now they refreshed it and I think the water block looks a lot better. It has RGB all around and it's still very cheap. Now what I have here is the 240 millimeters version. I really wanna try a 360 as well, but I haven't had the chance to try one yet. I really hope they make them white too. But this one comes in at 90 bucks and it's very easy to install. What I like a lot is the retention bracket for the socket. You can just slot it in, no screws needed. And to mount it, you just take off the original backplate holders for AMD, put their holders, put it down. Fairly straightforward. Now the fans do not come pre-installed. That's probably the only critique I have, but they do not have a lot of cables. They have a short cable and you connect to that. The proprietary ITEC cable, which then splits into a four pin fan and a four pin ARGB, which can be daisy chained to the pump directly. And the pump has a pump header too. So you can really customize it properly from your BIOS in terms of how the curve works. Now the new Ryzen 5s are not as power hungry, especially since I tweak mine. I'm gonna have an undervolting guide coming out in the next few days, so I'm gonna show you guys how I do it too, but uh, I'll show you guys the temperatures with this cooler and the stock Ryzen 5, and it's already running very quiet. But after tweaking it, we lost 10 degrees, gained 20% performance simply by playing with curve optimizer and RAM overclocking, so it's gonna be even better. And it's actually pretty quiet, kind of happy about it. Now, of course, K's airflow contributes, so we can actually go ahead and talk about it. Now, K's is the Showbuy 40 Shoe W, and I think it's a best seller here in Italy. I've seen it in so many budget builds, this one as well, but there is a reason for it. I mean, it comes in cheap. You can buy it for a hundred bucks, this one too. It comes with three ARGB fans, pre-installed, 
with the controller integrated in the case also the controller on the back with a standard 3 pin which you can connect to the motherboard and also daisy chain through the cooler itself and the fans have infinity mirrors on the side and also a reverse blade on the side take a look kind of cool for such a budget case now the white version is very well made it is fully white even the io on the top is white all the filters are white and they even painted white all the cables from the io usb 3.0 usb-c so if you want to make a fully snow white build which unfortunately due to budget restrictions is not what i've done here today you can do that and the cables are going to be fine too i really dislike when there is a very nice white case with black cables i think they just don't look as nice now the case is fully mesh even on the bottom even on around the PSU shroud which is a good thing but you want to make sure you have a positive pressure in it if you go full negative it's gonna just uh, get dust in from all sides and it's not gonna be the best now very recently I've made a video on the channel explaining all the issues I have with cheap aquarium like cases which have been flooding the market and a lot of people have been using well this case doesn't have pretty much any of those issues the only issue I'm gonna have is that well the fans are mostly there for aesthetic they don't push too much hair so of course it's a mid-range case you don't want to use it with a five thousand dollars gaming pc budget if you're building i want to say all the way up to a 40 80 yeah if you have good fans you can do it if it's a good model i would not put like a 4080 super or a 4090 in this case i think there are higher end models for that now power supply i went with itec again of course and the 650 watt is gonna be plenty fine if it's a good power supply for a Ryzen 5 and a 4070 Super. It's actually gonna allow you to upgrade later as well. Why? Because the new Ryzen 5 do not draw power at all. Then again, CPU is undervolted and the GPU is undervolted as I show in my guide as well. So they draw combined 300 watts, the whole system. So we are right at the 50% efficiency mark for our PSU. And the PSU again comes with nice packaging, Japanese condenser, 80 plus gold certified, fully modular, coming in at around the 80 to 90 bucks price, which is pretty solid in my opinion. So this is the spec list and how you can build a similar one yourself, but you're probably wondering, okay, but how does this thing perform in gaming? And let me tell you, it's great, okay? So the only issue you have if you pick the Ryzen 5 over an i5, uh, which I've made a build last week, which I think you should check out because that build is basically this, but with the Intel counterpart. And now if you pick the i5, you have a lot better productivity and multi-threading performance but if you pick the ryzen 5 6000 megahertz ram and if you tweak it properly this thing is faster in games a lot faster now i'm gonna show you the cpu z score which is pretty indicative of the performance of the chip and also the combined fire strike for stock performance of this pc now again if you tweak it which i think you should if you were watching this channel and by the way maybe drop a like and subscribe for more especially for more tweaking guides you can basically add the 15 percent to all these numbers which i'm about to tell you uh, if the pc is pro properly tweaked but basically a pc like this is gonna be overkill for 1080p competitive gaming apex you're gonna just uh, max out the engine at 300 fps all the time fortnite i'm not even gonna talk about um like basically you're gonna play at 400 fps with low settings and if you play on high gpu is gonna be your bottleneck but you can still hit uh, 144 hertz on high settings which is pretty impressive since fortnite has gotten heavy lately warzone we care a bit more about it since now we are also right on the verge of the release of black ops 6. now warzone is very gpu heavy but also cpu heavy but this ryzen 5 can surprisingly handle well the game so if you wanted to upgrade your gpu your power supply if you undervolt it's going to be able to handle it and your cpu is actually going to be able to do it however we care about this configuration at the moment and with this we are looking at the low 200 fps so not really 200 fps stable but that's pretty much a target you're looking at you can play i want to say on a 165 hertz monitor pretty fine not quite on 240 just due to gpu limitations but if you overclock undervolt everything you're going to gain back out of the performance which is going to make it very capable for that too now of course for single player games this pc is going to be plenty fine the gpu for the 70 super is very strong for that and the cpu is not going to present any issues whatsoever so i think for the budget 1500 bucks this is very solid and it's very difficult to beat it you have the other option which is the intel option on the channel in which i use even lesser known brands because itech is becoming pretty known and these are i think 
the two choices you have to make if you're looking to buy a PC in this budget range. Let me know what you think about iTech if you've tried their stuff. And if you have any critique or suggestion, please drop a comment and I hope to see you guys again in a new video. Bye bye. Thank you.